r slash ask reddit, what is the most depressing thing someone told you? An old friend with whom I spent many a night picking guitar had developed health issues, COPD, etc. I stopped by to see him one day and casually asked how he was doing. Chuck looked directly into my eyes and said, when you open your eyes in the morning and the depression sets in because you're alive another day, that's no way for a man to live. Just typing this out still makes me so sad, it's truly the most depressing thought. Guy that works for me super nice guy, homeless because he used to do drugs but is clean now and just trying to get his life on track but can't. Any and all programs he's tried don't accept him, the only ones that do want to send him to halfway house which is worse than being on the street according to him. Every week or so seems either his backpack full of everything gets stolen or his bike, only mode of transportation gets stolen. So every check he can't save or anything because it's always back to square one. Yesterday he was venting to me and basically said it's getting harder and harder to find a reason to wake up. He just sees no reason to continue but does and now I'm scared something could happen to him. One of my friend told me that her best friend committed suicide and then a few days later she found out she had lung cancer. Rough week, I hope she's doing okay. She got surgery and is fine now at least that's what she told me. It all happened a week ago and she got surgery a couple of days ago. Two weeks ago my girlfriend went to a concert. A couple guys got into a fight and while punching, accidentally hit my GF's coworker. She fell backwards on the bleachers and is now paralyzed from the neck down. I'm hoping she starts a GoFundMe or something. I can't imagine what she and her family are going through. She is 22F. Poor poor woman. This one hit me. Such a random occurrence. A patient of mine who had a long-standing history of mental illness told me, having a serious mental illness is like having a massive car crash and having life-changing injuries. You might get a bit better but you'll always have that injury. It's there for life and you just have to learn to live with it and there's nothing you can do to make it go away. It was a massive realization for me how badly mental illness can affect people for the rest of their lives. That metaphor is sadly also very matching for those who live through child abuse and other horrible traumas. Often one and the same in my experience unfortunately. Yep, I have bipolar eye with psychotic features and before my first real manic break I thought I was just depressed or maybe bipolar too. After experiencing psychosis and full-blown mania, I'm not quite the same even during my more stable periods. I'm constantly anxiety-ridden and reclusive and am way less pleasant to be around. My personality has been blunted because I'm more afraid of people judging anything I do who knows of my history, and because I'm a lot more serious of a person than I used to be. I cycle a lot faster now and the illness constantly consumes me. Before, it was just something lying under the surface. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. One time I was on Facebook and a family friend sent me a message that said, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm here if you need me, I asked her what she was talking about. Turns out everyone in my family knew my grandma died before telling me. Nobody told me because according to tradition, my dad would have to tell me because that granny was his mom. Guess who didn't have the guts to tell me? My niece died and I learned through Facebook before my mom could tell me. Her aunt spread it on Facebook. This happened with my grandpa's death, my brother found out over Facebook because my cousin posted about it. My parents had left to go to my grandma's and left him and I asleep. Being shaken awake by your sobbing, typically mean, older brother who was in a state of pure panic and shock still strikes me more than a lot of things. I found out my brother died because my cousin's husband posted it on FB. My parents were waiting to tell me when I got home from work. Poss even got mad when my husband told him to take it down. I saw you growing up through the years from the photos on your dad's desk. My dad was in the military, and growing up, I kind of already knew and accepted that it was always country first. There were so many missed birthdays, holidays, so many broken promises. Knowing that my dad kept every photo and letter we sent while he was over there made me feel like in some way, he did watch me grow up. He was still there, gaw. Now I miss the dude even more. Frick. This is where I am. Did 13 years AD, currently a DOD contractor that deploys. I'm currently in a more stable position where I don't deploy but family is like 12 hours away. I make that trek at least once a month just to see them. Strongly debating taking a huge pay cut so I can move closer but we're talking nearly 40 to 50k pay cut. 
Seeing my wife's pictures of the kids at a pumpkin patch this week just drives it home. I get murals every Father's Day of us and them together and I'm sick of living my and their life through pictures. Sending you so much love and manly hugs, dude. My dad went a similar route. Put his full 20, got out. Became a military contractor because he wanted to provide a better life. Let's just say that at his last contract, he was flown out back to home. It's been almost 20 years since he's been gone. I have his folded flag. Went on to college and grad school thanks to scholarships in Chapter 35. In a way, he was still able to be our provider and hero long after that last flight. Real talk, though. Sometimes I'm pissed that the someday retirement, travel the world as tourists and not as a PC's life he promised my mom never came true. I would gladly have worked during college if it meant one more dinner, one smile, one more anything from him and with him. As it is, all I have are faded photographs and letters. I forgot the sound of his voice. When I dream of him or think of him, it's not even clear memories. They're literally moving pictures from the photos left of him I've memorized. I chose my job because in my own way, I wanted to know the brotherhood in the military that came first. I wanted that link. And I want to welcome home the sailors, marines, soldiers, airmen, and coast guards in a way my dad wasn't when he came back from wars. So if you can, keep making the trips to see your kids. Squish them. Know the different shades that make up the colors of their eyes as you see them laugh in person. Money can always be made. But you, their dad, half of them, can never be replaced, replicated, or regenerated. I just want the best for my family but I'm realizing my presence may hold more weight. Do a couple more years if you can. Pretend that the extra money you make doesn't exist so you save that. Pay off the house, start a college fund, do investments. Your worth is way more than your body or wallet. If you have a daughter, teach her hot to fix cars and to be her own badass hero. A son? Dude, raise him to be the kind of man women deserve to have on their side. Create a legacy together. To understand why this is the most depressing thing someone has told me I must provide a little context. My grandmother who grew up in a very poor, rural area and was considered poor, by poor people standards, mainly because her father drank up pretty much every dime that came into the household. I found out later he also raped her, but that is another story. Anyway one day she told me that she had to go to school, elementary, with only a cold piece of fatback pork and a small biscuit for lunch in an old sack. She said all of the other kids either brought actual legitimate lunches in a lunch pail or bought food. So she sat all alone every day eating her lunch, because the other kids would treat her like garbage by making fun of her for her old raggedy clothes and her pitiful lunch. And she said that she wished so much she could have what the other kids were eating just every once in a while. She told me this when I was about eight or nine and I cried my eyes out and all I could say was, Grandmother I'm so sorry. Of course she told me not to and said not to worry about. It was all okay etc. But that, and the picture it produces, in my head is the most depressing thing someone told me. At least it sounds like she learned and grew beyond that beginning and now has a loving family that doesn't have to worry as much as she did. But yeah that's absolutely terrible. One time in college for some reason I was talking with my friend about light pollution. I think I told her that I missed being able to see more than just a few stars, since my hometown was rural and you could see quite a few there. Then I asked her if she could see the stars from her hometown and she said, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? And she explained that her family always just drove directly into the garage and went into the house from there. Not once in her entire life had she been outside her house at night and looked up to see the stars. There are certainly more depressing things I've heard, especially compared to other stories in this thread but for some reason it stuck with me. It made me feel so deeply sad for her. I think about it every once in a while, over a decade later. Kind of more funny and stupid on her part than depressing. She could have easily walked outside LMAO. Yeah, it just never occurred to her though. Not the way she was raised. My friend called me last week and immediately I knew something was wrong by the sound of his voice. He was calling to tell me his stepson had committed suicide. It has been an incredibly rough week and it feels awful as I feel nothing I do or say will help him and his wife. Dealt with this in a few ways. If I can give one tip, frozen food. When my brother died, my parents were a wreck, as one might expect. Our extended family was in town for weeks. Funeral planning, memorial, all the things. 
There comes a time though when the funeral's done. All the family has to go back home. Kids have to get back to school. You all have to pretend things are normal again just to get through. To me, that was the hardest part. During that time, we must have had two months worth of frozen casseroles, lasagnas, etc. that friends had made us. Beyond the obvious and simple burden it lifted off my parents, it also meant that each of those friends was at the table with us in spirit. It meant the world to me. I can still name every person that cooked for us and what they made 17 years later. Oh yay, we have set up a food train for them already. We actually had so much food we used the extra to feed the people at the celebration of life after the funeral. They'll be all set on food. Sadly, they were supposed to close on their house this week but thankfully the buyers have them another month. So we want to make sure they have enough food for that month but also don't want to waste a lot of food. What's also bad is we had to tell people to stop sending alcohol. We have cases upon cases of it and we're trying to keep the access to that limited. As we're worried they'll drink themselves to a very bad point. I hired an intern. As time went on, I learned more about him. At one point, he asked me how to shave. He had these bumps on his face and wanted to know why I did not. It turned out that he was shaving with hair clippers, no razor, shaving cream, aftershave, etc. Keep in mind, this is a 21Y, oh almost out of college. I learned he never had a father in his life and his closest male relative was a couple of states away. That really hit me hard. I took him to Target, bought the necessary supplies, and explained the process to him. We had many more conversations like this. He graduated and I set him up with a great job. We still keep in touch today. Good job buddy. My dad died very early in my life, however I just learned to do these things on my own, having a mentor, or just someone saying hey idiot, do it like this etc, would have been helpful for some of the learning curve. But that was very nice of you to do. When I was working as a supervisor for security work, I had a kid who was about 20 years old, he would call out sick randomly and then when he'd come back he'd always look super haggard. I finally asked him if there was anything that I could do to help him, and he asked how he could prevent infections in his privates. Basically he was getting infections, going to a free clinic which asked no curations, gave him antibiotics and he'd get better a few days later, repeat. After a personal conversation, I found out he didn't know how to properly wash himself, and since he was an intact guy, he was having those issues. His father disappeared when he was a baby, his mother didn't tell him anything about keeping himself clean in that area and he'd been having these issues for most of his life. I had the difficult conversation of explaining that a person has to wash the back and the front to be clean. The issue resolved itself. I wish you hadn't reminded me of this. My roommates and I would regularly go to this nearby bar in a small town. There was a woman in her late 40s who'd be there alone almost every week. She looked so desperate for attention, like she'd show up alone and look around like, here I am, totally alone and someone could buy me drinks. One night we were in the outdoor patio area so my friends could smoke, and that lady was talking to a couple in their 20s who were sitting at our table. She asked them, could you tell me your names again? They told her their names and she said, sorry, my husband beats me, and my memory isn't very good. Then, to fill the awkward silence, she softly added, he doesn't love me. This hurts to read. Typing it out, it felt like, this sounds so fake. But unfortunately it happened, and those words are burned into my mind. When me and last GF broke up she hit me with, I've been emotionally checked out of this relationship for a year, and I still think about it to this day. That's not on you, it's on her. She shouldn't have stayed in the relationship then. My ex GF used to say things like that to me in just about every fight we got in. Each time was a test to see how much further she could go. I'm sure it hurt, but I'm happy you're out. I haven't found mine yet, but for the first time in my life I can comfortably say I'd rather be alone than put up with a person who doesn't care for me. If you haven't already, you'll find someone who can truly appreciate you. Good luck friend. Wow that's brutal. When I was 9, I was just sitting after school watching TV, and just enjoying myself. My parents were out on the balcony of our apartment. And life was good, that was, until my mom came in. Her mascara was streaming down her face, she looked awful. I was like, mom. What happened? And she was silent. For a good two minutes, it was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. Then, she started crying again. I was so scared as to what happened, she didn't tell me anything. Then, my dad came in, also crying. 
At this point, I was really concerned. My grandma had just died two months before, and I was getting really scared. Then, my mom said, Carmela, she died in a car accident last night. For context, Carmela was my childhood best friend. She was going somewhere with her dad, and got T-boned by a truck. Not only had I lost my grandma, who was more like a mom than my actual mom is, but my best friend. I didn't leave my bed for three days. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. I didn't go to school for that whole week because I was too devastated. But the worst thing is, when I went back, nobody was talking, nobody was smiling, it felt like everyone was invisible. It's been five years, and I still am haunted by this memory. I got a random call from a doctor on Facebook in Indiana, I was in South Carolina, to tell me my dad was dying from multiple forms of cancer and because I was next of kin I had to make the choice to pull the plug. This is after years of not hearing from him or knowing how bad off he was because of his new girlfriend. I drove 19 straight hours to get there to see him. They called me when I was less than 30 minutes away to say he was gone. And I found out the only reason the new GF let them contact me is because they wanted me to pay funeral expenses. Most fricked up few days of my life. My drug-addled, violent, manipulative, and abusive brother was finally sentenced to jail. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I was free. My family was free. No more nightmares. Ironically, he was genuinely innocent of the crime he was sentenced for, but it didn't matter to me. Then, sitting outside the courthouse in the car after the sentencing, my mom tried to leave the car. Something was wrong, deeply wrong. I asked her where she was going. She turned to meet my eyes. I had never seen someone look so broken. She didn't look sad, although the corners of her mouth did pull down. She just looked, done. As if she had spent years trying and failing, and after all that failure had a glimmer of hope only to have it all ripped away. Helpless, hopeless, to her, all the light in the world had just been murdered in broad daylight. I see no point in living, so I'm going to walk into traffic and let someone hit me. And that was the day that I realized I wasn't her favorite child. Not even close. New Year's Eve 2018. Mom got everyone together and informed the family she had stage 4 brain cancer. She made it to January 4, 2020. This is my dad now. He found out he has terminal brain cancer March 2020, two surgeries and radiotherapy later he has been told no more treatment. Other than steroids and anti-seizure meds. Slowly deteriorating now. Struggles to walk and converse now. I really hope whatever time you have left with the old man is good in a similar boat but at the top of the river headed down. Wishing you the best bro. My heart's with you, it's incredibly shattering watching a parent, loved one go through this. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. My dad's battling stage 4 kidney cancer. Frick cancer. I'm sorry, she didn't make it. Sorry man, mine was, we lost her. Grandfather had a brain tumor and was fighting at the end. We lost my grandmother a month prior. At this point grandpa was barely holding on, without any quality of life. My mother called me and said, it's over. Got called daddy by a four-year-old boy whose dad I was burying, the dad and me were of similar build. I think the little tyke saw the uniform and though his daddy had finally come back from Iraq, really messed me up for a bit watching a broken-hearted wife pull a little boy from my leg. Okay, this is the worst. Yeah, this made me cry. Out of all of these this one broke my heart. I can relate to that poor boy's perspective. If you were or were military thank you for your service. I'm sorry but your wife passed away in her sleep, said by a UK policeman over the phone when I was stood in a hotel in Beijing whilst on a school trip. I can't imagine how painful it was, I'm so sorry for your loss. How are you doing now? Your dad died almost six years ago and you're still not over it? I was 22 at the time almost 25 now and that comment still puts me on the verge of tears every time I think about it. Frick people that say shit like that. My mom died in 2012 when I was 21. I turned 30 on Monday, have two great kids and a good job, but I'm still not over it. Stay strong buddy. I vowed to never say another word to that man after he said it and for some reason people thought I was rude for holding a grudge. Like, frick that. Grief doesn't just go away, you learn how to cope with it. Glad you're doing well and thanks for the kind words. A death of a parent is something that is hard to get over I'm sure. There is no amount of time you need to be over it by.
People like that are just insensitive. I don't love you anymore, when you are still very much in love with the other person. A timeless classic, never gets easier. Man, I got hit with the, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. She meant love in the first phrase as in a friend. Still keeps me up at night sometimes. At least we're still good friends. I don't know your exact situation, but mine felt similar. I recently decided to let her know I couldn't see her anymore because of how hard it was on me still interacting with her. My 25-year daughter whom I've been trying to have a positive relationship with constantly invents some way to be angry with me. Heart attack preempted me from working on her truck equals blocked on phone and social media for six months. Bought four new tires for her truck that didn't match her spare, blocked for six months. Grandfather gave me $5,000 to dole out for her college versus giving straight to her. She previously spent thousands on a dog and eating out every night, equals blocked for a year. She seemed to be trying to put all that behind her and things were fine for a year or so. I called her on Christmas Day at 7 p.m. but was blocked. I heard she was mad I waited so long in the day. She finally called me to yell at me and I said, I thought you were past this kind of stuff. She said, you can frick off, and hung up. I haven't heard from her since New Year's Day 2021. Yay no, you gotta stop giving her any kind of assistance until she grows up. My friends are 25 and we would be on any of each other's asses if any of us were that horrible to our parents, especially for no reason. It seems like she never transitioned into a fully grown adult, if I'm being honest. You seem like a great, caring parent though. Your daughter sounds like a spoiled brat and a literal child. I wish my parents would try this hard to actively love me. My parents aren't horrible or abusive, but they rarely engage me. You're doing your best, and she is an unappreciative daughter. Last week, my mentor asked me this, in an attempt to find comfort, I guess. This is the worst thing that could have happened, right? Nothing else will ever hurt as much as this, right? We were at her daughter's funeral. I still cry when I think about it, because you could just hear this woman's heartbreaking in every gasp and every sob. My heart breaks and I didn't even hear her tone of voice or see her. How absolutely tragic. Last month two teenage boys, 16 and 17, were in a wreck. Neither boy made it. We are all from a small community and all of our kids play baseball together. One of the boy's mothers said the exact same thing. Nothing will ever hurt as much as this. I cannot fathom the amount of pain their families are still in. No parent should ever have to bury a child, no matter how old. I know it sounds weird but I think about this often. My younger brother was murdered on the weekend of his 22nd birthday. He was the only blood family I had a relationship with and by far my best friend. Someone once asked my how I was so strong, I wasn't, and I simply said there is absolutely nothing else that will ever hurt me like this again. I am so freaking numb and desensitized I have literally zero fear. Kind of on the other side. I told my dad I hated him when I was younger and I really meant it because he made me feel completely stupid a lot of the time. Having kids now I would break down if either of my sons told me that. I try to praise them as much as I can and tell them how smart they are and how proud of them I am. Edit. We have a better relationship now. I was about 13 and my father was pissing me off and I leaned down, he was seated at the kitchen table, and I was standing, and whispered in his ear. Hissed it, really, I hope I never turn out like you. He died less than 10 years later, when I was 21. I'm 55 now, and that's probably one of the top 5 regrets of my life. I'd give anything to be one half the man he was. Dads are a gift but as years passed I noticed how much of his traits I have especially not expressing my feelings I can love so much but I look insensitive. Actually a few days ago my dad and stepmom called me out to have a family meeting, and in that meeting she said, your mom died almost a year ago it's time to move. You act like you're the only one who lost a mom. I lost my mom 11 years ago and so many other kids lost their mom, and she also said, I hate how almost every conversation has your mom in it move on she's dead. I was close to my mom and due to COVID I couldn't see her when she was in the hospital and it's hard for me to get over that. My stepmom thinks because it's been a year since my mom died I should be over the grieving process. I'm not. Everyone's grieving process is different. Your stepmother's behavior is abhorrent and she should be ashamed of herself. That's fricked up. I'm sorry about your mom. My dad died 10 years ago and I'm not over it. You never really get over a big loss, it always stays with you. 
you heal, but it remains as a scar. Look her dead in the eyes and say, I can lose a stepmom too, or just appointed, frick you, whenever you can works too. It wasn't something someone told me in confidence, but a random call. This was like 12 years ago. I was at work and my phone kept going off. Call after call from the same number. Some other random numbers with the same area code called but ignored it at first, because random numbers. Also was working retail and they read us the riot act if we had our phones out. After the fourth or fifth call they left a message. I stepped into the bathroom to listen. Ryan, call us now. We found everything Ryan. The pills, the needles. Everything. We know what you're doing. Call us back now. The voice was a mix of anger worry. I freaked the frick out and called them back immediately. They answer and immediately go, Ryan where the fuck are you? Come home now. I hear other voices in the background too. Lots of screaming and crying. I had to stop them in the middle of them yelling and go, wait. You definitely have the wrong number. This is not Ryan. I just wanted to call back and let you know. She apologized profusely and felt guilty for having blown up my phone and having me hear what was going. Told them I really hoped they were able to find them and I would be praying for them. They thanked me and hung up no idea if Ryan was found or if he's sober now. Still think about it today. My ex-girlfriend before we dated told me she tried and almost succeeded in killing herself because she thought no one could ever love someone as broken as her. How is she doing now, if you don't mind me asking? No idea nor do I care, she mentally and emotionally abused me during our two and a half year relationship and the relationship ended because she cheated on me. I was always there for her, took care of her, called off work when she was six I could stay home with her, wrote her handwritten love notes and placed them in her car, and around her apartment for her to smile and to know she was loved, and all I got in return was a relationship built on lies. Ah. No matter how love and affection you shower on entitled people, in the end you get nothing out of it. That is true, wise words you speak. Honestly I hope she is alright. I wish no one ill will but still have not talked to her in a year since this all went down last October. I know she is in a relationship with the guy she cheated on me with as someone sent me a screenshot of her Facebook profile with both them wearing matching alien pajamas. A clergyman told me, a church musician, that his faith had become non-existent and that he didn't believe most of what he preached. When I asked him why he was staying in the ministry, he said, the salary, benefits, and retirement package are too excellent to give up in favor of anything else. So basically any person with a pretty good job now. Many people in churches have no faith at all, they just go there, it is really heartbreaking and sad. I mean, if he's still able to give people hope, faith, whatever, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I'm not religious, but I respect people who have a faith. I think it's BS, but still if that's what you believe, good for you. I just mentioned it in another Reddit thread. This was about I guy the first grew up with. From second grade to twelfth I went to school with a boy. He was held back in second grade so we were in the same class until I started taking IB classes. We both lived in a working class neighborhood but I remember his family wasn't doing as well as mine. The house he lived in was on a road that flooded all the time, his father was a veteran and sounded like he wasn't adjusting well to civilian life and for a quick stint his mom was our bus driver. The boy himself was in bad shape. He was really overweight, he only wore ripped sweatpants, never wore appropriate clothes and the bus driver, not his mom, would have to wash the grease stain on the window when he laid his head on the window. One day, he went to school without a coat, it was minus zero C, but because he was so large the teachers couldn't find a coat to give him for the day. I felt that something wrong was going on with his family, but I was an innocent kid so I never put two and two together. I remember telling my parents about him and his tattered clothes but I think they just laughed at what I said. I tried being nice to him and talked to him on the bus playground just to be nice. People, even teachers, were insanely mean to him because of his weight. I remember in 9th grade 1 made a presentation on obesity and my teacher made a comment, we all know an obese person, he's in the next class over, hinting to the boy who was in the class next door. Because people were mean he only hung out with the geeks and was often rude to people. I think he had to act mean to keep himself away from people, he couldn't get hurt by people if he kept them away from him. We finally graduated and I thought I wouldn't hear of him again. Then the sad part comes. I was on the public bus going to university then see him come on. I waved at him to come sit with me. He was probably 300 pounds before graduation, but he was now 500 pounds. 
He was still wearing sweatpants and still had the overgrown cut. He came over and he looked like he had a rough night, cried. I asked him how he was and the waterworks came on. He told me he just got fired from his gas station job. I felt bad and tried reassuring him. He then talks to me about him having a disability, I think it was a reading disability, that was undiagnosed in school and it's causing him not to keep a job. He then told me his parents divorced right after he graduated. His parents stayed for kids, and he blamed himself for the divorce. Since his mother left, he hasn't seen her. He then told me about the abuse he experienced in the horrible treatment of his father after the divorce. I kept apologizing but I didn't know how I could fix his issue now. I encouraged him to seek help and speak to his case manager so he can get a new job. His stop came and he thanked me. Since that interaction I've never seen him ever again. I felt so bad that everyone, his family, teachers, other kids, just let him down. If he had been diagnosed he would have had a better time at school, if his parents took better care of him he wouldn't be obese, would look a little better and wouldn't have so much trauma. I blamed myself for his childhood, I should have gone to more important teachers, told other adults in my life, should have been more clear in my message. TLDR. Old schoolmate messed up from trauma because nobody took him seriously and stopped the abuse when he was a boy. This one really touched my heart. I knew a kid like that. Something so soul deadening when even the teachers and adults were in on the mockery. It made me feel that the world was truly a hopeless place when I was a kid. Doctor told me these exact words on the 4th of September 2019. Your kidneys are dead. Your creatinine is 1158. If you hadn't come in today, you would be dead in a few days, changed my life those words did. If I may ask, what happened after that? Kidney transplant? Or were they able to bring them back, somehow? I have been on my workup for transplant since January 2020, but was put on hold a few times since due to lockdowns but I was put onto the deceased donor list on Monday just gone. So I hope a transplant isn't far away. Best of luck, I'm rooting for you. Brother. It was good to see you bro. Me. Same led to this some more. I found my brother dead from self-inflicted gunshot wound two days later in my backyard. I'm so sorry for your loss. I've lost a family member this way as well. I hope you are doing okay. Frick dude, I lost my brother to suicide in May. It's a hole that I don't know will ever be filled. There is always something missing. My last conversation was via text, and it haunts me. He was saying he wanted to come visit, I moved out of state, and we were both looking forward to it. I don't know I'll ever get the sound of my dad, broken down in tears, calling me to say he had found him out of my head. I got to visit his final resting place, him and his service dog, in August. I was hoping it would bring some closure. It didn't, anyway. Sorry about your loss. It's a pain that a lot of people just don't understand. I truly wish no one had to deal with a suicide. It hurts so much more than a death you can see coming. I'm really worried about my brother and this is the kind of nightmare I sometimes think about. I'm sorry for your loss. I was bagging groceries in high school. It was Christmas Eve and folks were bustling in and out getting last minute items for their get-togethers. I bagged the groceries for this one lady who had just regular food instead of holiday food. I placed her groceries into the cart and followed her to her car. After loading her groceries I told her to have a merry a Christmas. She responded that it was hard to have a merry Christmas when her husband just died. Like the day before Christmas Eve he died. She broke down crying flooding me with how heartbroken and alone she was. I was 16, I didn't know how to respond. I just sat there and listened as she unloaded always thought about her near the holidays and it makes me thankful for my family. Just sat there and listened as she unloaded. You're doing the right thing. Yeah, you'd be surprised how few people are willing to do even that much. Thanks op for being a good kid. I'm older now, this was in the mid 80s. But it has stuck with me since. Suppose I think about her every year for more than 30 years now, pushing 40 years. I guess some part of me always hoped she found peace. My grandmother was in hospice and she wasn't able to eat or drink anymore because of cancer so she had an ink tube that would pull out whatever she drank. She was living longer than the docs expected. She asked us if she should just stop drinking the water and ginger ale and get it over with already. It hurt to know she was suffering physically and mentally in her final weeks. I know this feeling. Nana frequently joked, just take me out back and shoot me, which would make me laugh uncomfortably. 
One day she stared me dead in the face after and added, no one deserves to live like this. She had Alzheimer's. I agree with you, the doctor response when I decided my 15 yo son had been through enough and we needed to turn off life support. Fought leukemia for 15 years. My friend from high school was the best actor and one of the best looking guys in our school. Got amazing grades and was super kind, just glowed energy. He starred in musicals at the theater next door and is now does incredible drag. When he came out to his mom, she said she would have rather had an abortion than a gay son. Frick any parent who gives a shit their kid is gay. Just thinking about it makes me want to cry. He loved his mom so much. My heart breaks at that woman's ignorance. She just tore up a priceless gift. I would do anything for a son like him. I don't love you anymore on my last day of chemo. How are you doing now? 2.5 years cancer free and in my second year of college, I've gained some weight but otherwise I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Hey, gaining weight after cancer and chemo is actually a really great thing. It means your body is healthy and is planning for its own future. So glad to hear you're well now friend, congratulations on your health. Galahad to hear that. Oh god this does hurt. I am trying to date a schizoid. I've heard this twice now. Luckily the second time it was obvious she's off the deep end and I shouldn't take anything she says to heart. But it still hurts on an emotional level even though I know she's just confused. I have been close to exactly where you are. Obviously all situations are different, but for what it's worth, even though it was incredibly difficult and I still sometimes feel shame for giving up on her, it was the right thing to do. I hope for your sake and hers that your situation isn't as horrible as mine was, but for what it's worth I ended up narrowly avoiding a bottle being smashed over my head. Decent reflexes saved me from a life-changing injury, just at the whim of her illness, and that still wasn't the final straw. Trauma bonding is real and I hope you are mindful of it. If you can't tell, my advice without knowing you or the specifics would be to get as far away from her as you can. Either way, I empathize with the turmoil you must have gone through and wish you the best. I definitely get the shame part, even after the violence. I'm glad you got out of there. I got hit with a half-gallon booze bottle in the head a few months ago because I asked somebody who I thought was my friend to pay me back the money he owed me, which wasn't even that big of a deal. Fricking sucks man. I already had brain fog from a car accident years ago and now I really feel it. Ah. People suck. In high school, one of my teacher's wife ended up getting a tumor on her body. I remember he was very worried and scared, he didn't show it but you could tell. He told all eight classes he had, lots of students, a couple weeks go by and his wife has a test for the tumor and it turned out to fortunately be benign. I asked him how his wife was and he broke the good news to me, he then proceeded to tell me, you know of all the students and teachers have told about my wife you're the only one who asked me about her. My chest became tight and I felt horrible, poor man was worried sick about the love of his life and no one cared. I mean, I can see why a lot of people would think the considerate thing to do would be to not say anything. If she had died, I doubt it would make him feel good to have everyone asking about her. Damn that's actually really depressing that no one else cared as to how his wife was doing. Not necessarily. Some students would have been too shy, reserved to comment on what is a personal family matter. Yeah I probably wouldn't bring it up unless I was close with the teacher. I was 15 f, it was 1.30 am at my sister's house, she runs into the room I was sleeping in to tell me, mom just had a heart attack, she is dead. My mother died while I was on a work trip for NYC, but I didn't find out until my father told me when I got back a few days after the funeral. I was very angry but my father just kept saying she didn't want to bother me while I was traveling. The woman did not want to ruin your trip. My parents did that to me when my grandfather died while I was taking the bar exam. I was pretty upset about it at the time, but looking back I realized they had good intentions even if I disagreed with their decision. It's not like he was going to be any more or less dead two days later anyway. Then while my father was telling me, my cousin Andy came over to the house to offer his condolences, but also got upset that I didn't call him to say hello because he was in NY at the same time. I told him I didn't have time to see him, but he insisted that that was fine, but if you're in the same city you ring and say hello, and I said that was ridiculous. My parents did the same exact thing to me on the week of my last set of nursing school finals. I was studying for finals when my grandpa called my dad. 
My dad's face changed, and I knew something was wrong. My dad said, I love you, and handed the phone around to my family. When the phone got to me and I answered, my grandpa's voice was so hoarse and weak. He told me that he has pneumonia, and that he was so so tired. He was tired of going to dialysis 4x a week, so tired of going to the hospital, and he's decided to stay home from this point forward. He told me he loved me so much, that I was going to be the best nurse, and that he couldn't have wished for a better granddaughter. I knew he was saying goodbye, but I just couldn't let my brain process it. Fast forward a week, I hadn't asked my parents how grandpa was doing, cause I knew in the back of my mind, but I just didn't process it. As I arrived home from my last final, my dad walked out to my car, congratulated me on finishing nursing school. He squatted down next to me, held my hand, and told me that grandpa had passed away shortly after speaking to me on the phone, to pack my bags, and told me we're headed across the US to attend his funeral. I could not believe the restraint my dad held throughout that week, despite knowing his own father had died, and he did it all for me. My whole family knew, but they all held it together so I could focus on my finals. When my mom wanted me to go to my dad and get him to give her money after they got divorced. Mind you I haven't seen my father for about 10 years because she took us, moved and never told him where we were. I hope you found him and get to do things your way. Sometimes parents don't do what's best for their kids. I actually got to see him again when I hit 18 to which he confused me with my cousin, though he saw him from behind. My mom set it up but I feel as it was due to a mixture of they'll manage to contact each other eventually and as a favor. We still talk and share a lot but the relationship sometimes feels distant still and meeting his side of the family was very weird to say the least. When I met my wife, she hated her birthday. She finally said it was because she never had one she felt was worth remembering or something always happened around that time. Since being with me, though, she's really enjoyed her birthday. You are the best. I adore birthdays, not just my own, and always try to make them special any way I can. My introvert friend just wants to grab a few drinks then play games. Done. A louder friend wants to go watch Raw then drink and slam back hot dogs. It's your day. All that to say. Bless you for giving someone the best B-Day gift ever, which is a B-Day worth remembering. I am both the introvert and loud friend. Both of those B-Day scenarios sound amazing. I will celebrate your birthday with you anytime. I love birthdays so much haha. Most of my friends are a lot more low-key about them than I am but I'm all about celebrating people. I love celebrating birthdays too. I go overboard trying to make people feel special at times. A fun birthday tidbit for you, since you love them and all. My birthday is the day after my mom's birthday. We never get to celebrate day of because of her work but we always do something special, together, for our birthdays. It's my favorite thing ever. Nice. You have made it to the end already. Thank you for watching. If you aren't already subscribed, please do so, as there will be more videos like this in the near future.